Uh, are we working? There we go. All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Ethan Arrowood. I'm a software engineer at Vercel, and today I'll be presenting the Empowering the Future of the Web, Advancing Web Runtime Interoperability with Winter CG. The Winter CG is a new community group, a W3C community group, that stands for Web Interoperable Runtimes Community Group. Um, we, you know, play on the, uh, the abbreviation here, but Winter CG was easy enough to come up with as well as uh, easy enough to brand. So we like using this little snowflake as sort of the, the sort of default logo for, for the group. And you'll see it come up on different, uh, different some of our proposals. Like other community groups, uh, or as we've heard from like the standards working group, um, from OpenJS or the W3C, Whatwig, this is a group of companies that are all working together, um, or developers from companies working together to, to push something forward, to solve some sort of problem. Um, these are all of the existing members of Winter CG, uh, some more active than others, some who just were kind of around for the inception of the group, and some who are actively participating in it. Um, and the reason, like, why did Winter CG get formed? From hobbyists to enterprises, interoperable applications are highly desired, but the support is lacking. If any of you have heard of my previous talks about landing fetch in Node.js, you will probably remember the interoperable story. There is this figurative JavaScript developer who learned how to write JavaScript on the web, and they learned how to use the Fetch API building a front-end website, and then they came to Node.js, and they were like, wait, I have to use the request module? But then this thing tells me to use Axios, and this thing has a Node Fetch, but it doesn't really work the same way as the Fetch in my browser does. And so there's this interoperable story that we're trying to improve over the world of JavaScript. And so the goal of the Winter CG is to promote a comprehensive, unified API across all JavaScript environments. Over the past two years, we've seen the rise of many very exciting new runtimes. This includes Deno, uh, Cloudflare's WorkerD, um, even uh, folks like Vercel and Netlify have started branching into this edge runtime serverless function space. And so um, Node was the you know, the dinosaur, but not the deno of all of them. And they've set a lot of really great precedences. But as everyone knows, there's no Node.js standard. There's no specification for Node, just like there is for ECMAScript. And so that's kind of what the Winter CG wants to start moving towards. How can we, uh, in a standards body sort of way, uh, try to create this similarity, this interoperability between all of these new JavaScript environments or runtimes. Before we continue, some of our like non-goals, though, is we don't want to be creating new APIs. We don't want to be creating competing APIs. And we also want to keep our focus from shifting too much. What this kind of means is, is the Winter CG is not here to be like, we're going to invent the way to make a JavaScript runtime, and if you don't like do it this way, you're getting left behind. What we do want to do is try to met, uh, merge some of the gaps or mend some of the gaps between, the, between all of them and find some ways that they can be similar and effective together. That way, developers, when they're coming from one to another or approaching the problem space of which one do I use, you can take away some of the concern of, well, Deno lets you import things this way, and Node.js lets you require things that way. And so we're not going to try to influence these, these frameworks too much in the sense of, like, you must do things the way we say so, but we want to provide some baseline that they all can be like, well, if I write winter CG compatible code, I can expect it to work in Node, I can expect it to work in Deno, and so on and so forth. The process at which this community group operates starts with collaboration. We've created a space for the vendors and implementers to discuss these new or existing web platform APIs. And we've provided the organizational structure for members to contribute um, effectively. I like, this, I like the, the wording that, we, that you know, me and the Winter CG have come up, here, come up with here because we don't want to get too bogged down with the, with the processing of running a group like this. We want it to be more fluid and, and easier for folks to be involved with. And that's because 
if we make it too difficult to, con to collaborate, then what's the point of this community group? Because we're gonna be wasting all of our time trying to just do the first step. So the second part in the process is the proposal step. This is where we will analyze the existing web platform APIs and we will propose improvements to the existing specifications. Um, I like picking on fetch. It's defined by the, the WhatWig uh, group instead of the W3C or instead of WinterCG. And rather than us trying to like make a new fetch, we have spent a lot of time trying to contribute back to the existing fetch and promoting that all of these other runtimes, Node, Deno, Cloudflares, um, Bun, we were like, hey, everyone should use fetch, but let's also make sure that we're improving fetch together so that it's effective for all of us, including the web still. And that leads us to implementation. We're also not trying to just be um, a leech on these existing standards bodies. We're getting involved in a way and we're helping actually improve the specs. We're contributing directly to the fetch standards. We're, we're uh, contributing directly to the web platforms themselves as well. One of the original members is Agalia, who is well, well known for actually implementing changes to web platforms. And so we work in this sort of like trifecta magic of, okay, we want to add something to the Wetwig fetch spec. Egalia is prepared to actually implement that change in places like Google Chrome. And now the fetch spec gets updated for the benefit of server runtimes, and we've done the work as well. So we're, being a, we're trying to be as good community members as we can um, through the Winter CG. And this leads us to some, some deeper dives on the steps of the process. So in the collaboration step, um, our main channel, which I'll share links to at the end of the presentation, we use uh, a lot of async communication on a tool called Matrix. Um, this chat channel is open for anyone to join and it's uh, really effective. It's kind of just sort of, it has threading capabilities, very similar to tools like Discord or Slack. We hold now monthly meetings. They used to be a little higher frequency but we have um, tried to decrease this amount, the amount of meetings we're having and shifting more towards that optimistic async workflow. And then finally, we are a true W3C community group, so we do have a charter, and within that charter, we actually do have a consensus protocol where if a disagreement was to occur and we needed to fall back on some process, that group has that. We have the things in place to make to keep ourselves effective even in the times of unfortunate conflict. For the proposal step of our, of our process, we have the classic specification process. We follow the W3C templates and standards for creating what are called drafts. Um, and we also will still, I mentioned before, we're not trying to create new APIs, but we will utilize the tools like simply forking a repo in order to continue to iterate on our own while simultaneously contributing as much upstream as we can. There are things in Fetch that might never actually land in the WhatWig proposal, um, or the, in, what, in the WhatWig standard, but we can, what we can try to limit, we don't need to create a new Fetch, we can simply fork it and call it Winter CG Fetch and say, okay, if you're gonna try to abide by this standard instead of that one, here are the, the minor differences. Um, and then finally, in this last bullet point, the runtime keys, this is a, this was a, a, a draft um, that I'm gonna kind of pick on because I wrote it myself. And the idea is uh, it's not a real proposal or standard in the sense of this is not something anyone must implement. It's also not something that a lot of people have had to like process and get lawyers in, involved with. It, all it is is simply a draft. You can or can't, you can or can't listen to it. You can or can't use it. And a lot of the members in Winter CG are in fact using it. We all agreed upon it when we published it. But the thing is, it's always gonna be considered a draft unless the Winter CG was to sort of level up, so to speak. And with that, it means that some of our work is a little bit less, um, I used a word earlier that's like, it's less, um, I'm forgetting it now. Uh, it doesn't have as much like onus or as much permanence as like the ECMA standard might. Where if something lands in the ECMA standard, you are cementing that into time forever. 
with the winter CG, we're still operating in a world of like, we can get things wrong, sort of. We definitely don't want to be breaking the web by saying one thing and then a month later deleting it. But we do have this, the ability to be like, let's be here to iterate and let's iterate quickly. There's not as much process to get in our way when we're trying to build these things over time. And then finally, the implementation step. I mentioned already, we're contributing back to existing standards. The fetch one in particular, here's an example of Luca from the Deno team contributing a, a new way to handle set cookie um, for headers in the fetch spec. And this landed directly in the Whatwig spec. This never even had to hit our fork of, of fetch. Um, and we have another example of this coming up where um, it, the, the, the other example did kind of start on our end, but there are efforts made here by our members in order to, again, promote that the web first standards versus some, creating something new. So some notable achievements that I've already mentioned a few times include fetch, the minimum common API, and runtime keys. Um, I'll dive into the runtime keys in a little bit later, but the, the minimum common API is one of the first things that Winter CG ever proposed, and it is, a, it is essentially a collection of other web platform APIs. Think readable streams, um, web crypto, fetch, and we say you as a Winter CG runtime or Winter CG compatible runtime should implement these standards. And you should, be, you should be expect to be compatible with them. We haven't done too much else with it just yet, but we do have some exciting plans that I'm gonna to get to soon. But first, let's dive into another achievement of ours. This is the response.json static method that we added to the fetch um, specification. And again, this is something that in Luca's um, original post, he described how this is something very valuable for servers, but not necessarily browsers. Yet it does fit into the model that the browsers already support for the Fetch API. And so he created an issue, and not soon later, it landed into the official uh, Fetch spec. And Luca did the work of adding it to the specification. He implemented it in his runtime. It's been implemented in other fetch implementations. I believe it already is in Undici, and if it's not, it already it will be there very soon. Um, and some of the browsers have already started landing this as well. Some other pieces that are work in progress for the fetch spec is the forbidden headers list. This is something that I, um, I wanted to highlight in particular because this is where having our fork of fetch might be really important. Uh, headers on the front end are very important parts of your networking, uh, networking interfaces. Getting them right and controlling what can and can't be managed by the clients themselves is a huge, huge security effort. That will not change. That will not be something that will be easy to modify for these browsers. But yet, on the server, where you are sometimes the thing creating the responses, you do need to modify these headers. And that is where relaxing some of the restrictions that browsers have put in place for their networking interface is useful. Where we can still have an interoperable fetch API, just in one context, you are able to modify some of these headers, and in others, you aren't. And so this is one of those examples of uh, Andrew from Agalia, I believe, um, working on trying to propose that modification to our fork of fetch in order to make those the header restrictions a little more relaxed. Some other work in progress things that the that the Winter CG is working on is changes to the performance API or standardization of the performance API. Um, Node.js developers uh, may be fairly familiar with this, with the performance um, object that you can do, like I think it works with like, the HR time, and it's used for like, primitive timings of how things are, are operating. And then the web crypto streams, this one's uh, really cool. It seems to be mainly driven by Cloudflare and Deno, but the idea is, is we have web crypto and we have streaming, what if we merge the two together, where you could decrypt and encrypt um, using the powers of web crypto, but in a streaming format. And that way you don't have to encrypt and decrypt the data all at once necessarily. Um, both of these are still highly in progress and there wasn't much else to share except the little high level things. 
But one exciting piece that we can actually dive into together is called async context. This is actually being driven to TC39 by members of Winter CG, yet another um, a group that we are contributing directly to rather than trying to create our own new things. And the motivation of async context is best described by kind of working through some code. So I want to direct our attention to either one of the two, but I will work on the, the left one with us. And so you'll see at the top level here, there is a function called program. Don't worry what's inside of it just yet. Just realize that it's a synchronous function. There's no async keyword. Um, or at least, sorry, it's not necessarily a synchronous function, but it's not an async function. And then we have the let shared sort of global variable. And then below that, there is the implicit async function. At the very bottom of the file, we execute program. If we go into now, go into program, you'll see that we've defined a value object. And then there's a try, a try finally block. Within that try block, the first line is shared equals value. We are assigning that variable value, which is inside of the program closure, to the global variable shared. Then we call implicit. Notice how we're not using the await keyword for this async function implicit. Now let's look inside of implicit. Implicit first starts by asserting that the shared.key property is one, two, three. Shared is undefined by default in this function. So if you were to just call implicit on its own, that first assertion should fail. But since, it's being called, since value is being assigned to shared first, then that is called, then it, the variable is assigned. But then we have the await one. One of the niche parts of how async code works in JavaScript is that the call stack gets cleared um, every, I think, like trip around the, the queue, the, you know, the micro task queue. And so when we call await one, the shared variable loses its assignment from the program function. So now in the next lines, you see the assert throws, assert equal, shared.key. That block actually, the shared variable loses its assignment and becomes undefined. This is a very simplified example of a much more difficult problem, but the async context will fix this. Async context is a, is, proposes a new API that can, be, uh, that can solve this problem where variables lose their value over the course of async execution. On the right side, there is this example of, of a tracer and this, um, this fetch request where we want to be able to time how long this fetch request is running. And by, doing, by using the async context, we can set the start time, the trace ID, the span ID, think like basic telemetry tool building. Um, and now your fetch request can get timed and we can keep a hold of all of this implicit data without losing it over the execution time. Um, I wish I could spend an hour drilling into the async context problem, but this is a bit, this is a really key example of what the winter CG is trying to do for the web as a whole. This is a problem that exists not just for server runtimes, but for all JavaScript environments, your browser included. And so by pushing this, this change forward in the TC39, and then hopefully landing it in all of the other runtimes, we can solve the problem for everybody rather than just one group. Um, and that kind of extends, I don't, I don't think I included it here in the slides, but Node.js has already partially solved this problem with async local storage. So if you're familiar with the async local storage API, there's a lot of similarities between that and async context. And the idea is Deno might have its own solution and Bun might have its own solution, but they're, none of them are the same. And this is a problem that we might need to be more consistent across all of these different runtimes and thus the winter CG effort of async context was created. So diving into another uh, work in progress, this is something that I'm driving called the winter CG common key. Um, I mentioned the runtime keys proposal earlier. And what that looks like at a top level is if you're familiar with using package JSON to define different exports or engines for your project, usually you'll call it like node, um, or the require export, or the, or the um, like ESM or CJS export. And the idea is, is what happens if you're building a project that runs in Node and Deno? How do you tell these different packages which to use? 
interestingly enough, a lot of existing runtimes will look at things like, oh, if I'm Deno, I think optimistically the ESM exports are the ones that I want. So they'll reach for that as their priority. But then Node.js actually already does specify in their document that you can use the Node key to specify the Node.js export. And that is considered within the stack of priority for um, what file will be executed. As we evolve into this world where there's multiple runtimes and people are building libraries or packages that need to be able to run everywhere, it was thought though, why don't we create a list of keys that developers can use to sign signal what runtime should be associated with what thing. We're very loose on the terminology here because the idea is this is just a registry of keys. It is a, the, the spec is very simplistic. It is just a list. And the list explains, okay, here's the key. Here's the runtime it's associated with. Here's the documentation for the runtime. And here may be like the marketing branding tagline for it. And that's it. The specification does not state that you must use these keys in your package JSON file. We provide this example as a way to say, here is how you may use it. Here is how if you're the author of the next new web bundler, you may want to read and process these keys. But the specification does not state how they're meant to be used, just that they exist and how they could be used. And so now what do we do for interoperable libraries and applications? If there are 17 different runtimes, and I need to then specify 17 different exports, what is my you know, minimum common denominator? And that is where we were gonna combine the minimum common API, which is what the winter CG treats as it's like, this is your winter CG compatible runtime specification, and the runtime keys proposal. We'll create the winter CG common key. We'll work on some kind of versioning system, either Semver or an annual versioning system. You can think of this like um, the ECMA script. You have ECMA 2023 and then 2024, or I think it's ES 2023 or ES 2024. And we can do an annual release cycle where next keyword could always point to the following year if people want to be bleeding edge. Or we can do some kind of Semver versioning where we use major and minor and patches to relate to major and minor breaking changes. And then finally, we can add a level of conformance testing to this versioning system. We could leverage the existing web platform tests and build a similar tool to can I use, which is what the browsers use to say, oh, is this feature available in Firefox and Chrome and Internet Explorer and Safari? We can do the same thing, but for all the web runtimes. Is this feature conformant in Node and Deno and Bun and et cetera? And then better yet, if you are Winter CG, you have access, you know, Winter CG will have the green light for half the properties. And then maybe the ones that differentiate will be the other ones where all the different platforms might differentiate. And then finally, you can use this key inside of your project configuration files, just like the other runtime keys to say, here's my default export for anything that is compatible with Winter CG. I don't care if you're using Node or Bun, you can run it here. And better yet, here's the engine specification as well, which is a commonly used field in the package JSON to specify what major version of Node.js your project supports. In this case, I'm using the annual versioning example where you could say 20, greater than or equal to 2023. So my package will run in any system, any runtime that is compliant with Winter CG version 2023 or above. So get involved. Um, if anything you saw here today sparked an interest in you, you don't have to be a company to join us. Please jump on into our, um, into, go to the website. We have all the links there. The WC3 community org is available for anyone to join, company or otherwise. And our GitHub is where we do a lot of our work. Um, I've said this to some folks who have asked, really the best way to get involved with the Winter CG is to kind of throw yourself in. We are a very, I like to use the word scrappy kind of a community group, where if you're willing to do the work, do it. We don't have, there's purposefully not a lot of barriers in the way for you to do something. For example, just yesterday at the, at the, um, at the Collaborator Summit, we talked about maybe the idea of standardizing package JSON. We're not sure we want to do that yet, but we were pretty confident that WinterCG is a pretty good place to start that conversation. 
So in a couple of minutes, I created a package JSON specification repo. I started the thread in the matrix channel, and people are already going back and forth on an issue who weren't even at the conference getting involved. And this is the element of there's something that you think fits into this picture, just jump in. We are a bit more than willing to enable that, um, help you create those repos, create those issue threads, uh, and get started creating the, the future of the web. So thank you. Again, my name is Ethan Arrowood. You can follow me on GitHub or Twitter, and you can reach out to me on either one of these email addresses. Thank you so much. Let's see if there's any questions anyone has. We can ask them now, or we can ask them um, privately. So thank you. So I think, yeah, so we haven't talked directly about like what is coming next for Winter CG in the sense of what would it take to be more than that at the moment. I think we've effectively been contributing upstream. Fetch is the biggest example of like most of our work there has landed in the existing Fetch spec. So there's not really a need for us at the moment to be more than we already are, since our major goal for a lot of these specifications is to find a other home for them, find something that already does exist to land it in. On a trick, uh, what's the trick is for runtime keys, for the minimum common API, potentially for the package JSON work, there really might not be something else. And those might just exist as drafts until we get to that point of now it's time for the winter CG to evolve into a, something else. I will think that we will lose some of our current autonomy if we do kind of go to that next step, which has its own pros and cons. Yeah. I think it's a bit premature to have done the package JSON specification, given that no package manager is a part of the Winter CG it's true. group. And I think that maybe you should start with bringing those folks to that table first. And they might, I, I see a lot of commonalities with like work and collab spaces that are happening in OpenJS that are happening in Winter CG. And I just want to make sure that, that you're getting the right people in that forum. And, and it's great to like put energy towards you know, standardization and, and it's just like, I know there's different people in winter CG that might not be here in collab spaces okay. and, and vice versa. And, um, you know, it'd be great to see more of the folks that are probably doing some of that work that uh, and have the energy from winter CG come to these spaces the like yourself. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, just want to highlight that uh, some of the initiatives that I'm sure around standardization of and, and runtime interop feels like maybe some folks' hands were forced into Winter CG. I, yeah. <laughs> based there's, on what I know about back, <laughs> the back channel conversations that were had. But definitely. Yeah. There's yeah. a level of um, ideal, idealistically, uh, the Winter CG, because of its scrappiness, is there is there seems to at least have been more momentum building opportunity there than there has in other spaces. And I think it's the natural like if we're always hitting a wall here, or in the sense of like, why hasn't things happened one place? Well, maybe if we try from the other angle and then we bring everyone along with us, like you're saying, why don't we get more people, the right people into these conversations? That's how we make these big uh, improvements to the whole web. Um, in particular, uh, I will be joining the, I mean, I only found out about the OpenJS standards working group being here this week. It's existed for a while. Maybe I've seen it come up. Maybe it's my own fault for not digging into what it is. But there's that balance of like, we're crossing these streams as much as we can to be like, oh, let's go get involved there and see what partnership needs to be created. I know one of the creators of Winter CG spoke at the standards group, but similarly didn't do a good enough job of bringing it back to the Winter CG that they went and did that talk. And so now we're like, oh, there is a, there is a communication channel there. Let's use that. Similarly with TC39, there are delegates on the TC39 who participate in Winter CG. So now it's like, awesome, how can we use that to land async context? 
and et cetera, et cetera, for, for what way groups, for W3C groups, how can we leverage as much as possible to, to improve the web? That's a great, great comment. Awesome. Any other questions? Wonderful. Well, thanks again, everybody.